Well, Trump was for him until he was against him. Last night, Trump had the following to say about the debate moder moderator, Lester Holt. Mr. Trump, how do you feel about how Lester Holt did? I thought Lester did a great job. Okay. I thought, honestly, I thought he did a great job. You thought the questions were fair? Yeah, I thought it was great. All right, that was immediately after the debate in the spin room. Now here is Trump on Fox and Friends just this morning, a few hours later. Uh, what grade would you give uh, Lester Holt? Uh, I'd give him a C, C plus. I thought he was well, okay. I thought he was fine. All right. You I can mean, check nothing the box. outstanding. I thought he, he gave me very unfair questions at the end, the last three, four questions. But, uh, you know, I'm not complaining about that. It sounds like you're complaining at least a little bit about it. Uh, certainly your team was. Now, Trump also complained about the microphone he was using, even though nobody else found it to be a problem. Then there is the beauty queen controversy. You cannot make this up. Last night, you may remember, Hillary said that Trump called the following woman, Alicia Machado, Miss Piggy. Now, she's a former Miss Universe. Now, instead of denying that, Trump decided the good idea is he doubled down. She was the winner, and uh, you know she gained a massive amount of weight, and uh, it was it was a real problem. By the way, she got up to 160 pounds, which is less than the average weight of the American woman. So, trust me, that story is going to have legs. Now, there are some additional memorable lines and moments from last night, and they became instant Twitter Twitter memes. Now, I want to bring Andrew back for some of that because I'll be honest, Andrew, some of the stuff I picked up. Some of us said didn't, and we all know the three of us, you know, the Al Gore sighing or mm -hmm. Bush looking at his watch or some of those moments, a little flop sweat from uh, Dick Nixon. You know, those moments maybe don't resonate right away, but the more people talk about them, the more they not just carry, carry on urban legend, but they become their own narratives. And, and it's, also, it's also one of those things where you might not notice it the first time, but after somebody tells you, you'll never not notice it again when you're watching the clip. And hands down, the biggest online reaction from the debate focused on Donald Trump's nose. But perhaps I should let Donald explain this one straight from his nostrils. Mexico. Mexico. And that prompted some of the more memorable memes and tweets online last night. Former Vermont governor and presidential candidate, by the way, whose own body language may have cost him a shot at the White House, yeah. tweeted, notice Trump sniffing all the time, Coke user? Comedian Patton Oswalt followed that up, that Trump's new nickname is Sniffles, while Huffington Post's Sam Stein chimed in with some reality. Imagine for a second what Trump supporters would be doing if Clinton had the Sniffles last night, Rich. Okay, and, and by the way, you picked up on it. And, Within and the first five minutes of the debate, I, re I knew it. I could, I, first of all, I could hear what was happening, and I, and I could see it. They had the volume turned way up in the, in the uh, reporter's room last night, and it was just, it was noticeable. I was typing something and taking notes on the debate, and I heard it for maybe the third or fourth time and looked up because it, it caught my ear and it caught my eye. It was just that noticeable, and it was happening all the time. And in the middle of his sentences, he would say something like this... <laughs> And then all of a sudden, talk and continue on like that. And so it was it was totally noticeable. And, and you're not the only one. I heard a lot of other people yeah. uh, mentioning it. Now Those things matter. Those it, things matter. It, apparently, and they got their own narratives, right? Yeah. And then uh, there were some other memes that went through last night. The next one, that Howard Stern and Sean Hannity's names even made it into the debate. And, it, and they did. Uh, I think we have a clip of that we can play for you. When I did an interview with Howard Stern, very lightly, first time anyone's asked me that, I said, very lightly, I don't know, maybe, who knows, essentially. I then spoke to Sean Hannity, which everybody refuses to call Sean Hannity. Howard Stern and Sean Hannity, Twitter named Wes Reynolds pointed out, talked about it tonight's debate, Rosie O'Donnell and Howard Stern, not talked about education reform, environment, health care. Comic Paula Poundstone tweeted, for those of you who missed it, I think the best line of the night was when Trump said, no one wants to call Sean Hannity. While Russell Moore wrote, the words Howard Stern just came up in a debate for President of the United States, James Madison weeps somewhere. <laughs> Did you ever think we would see the day Howard Stern makes it into the presidential but debate? Not just makes it in. But he was the one that asked the question, um, which is deciding, uh, you know, whether or not Howard, uh, whether or not Donald Trump, in fact, was for the war or not. So it wasn't just all the stuff that he did say in that same interview with Stern about women and everything else. And on the subject of what Trump said about women, listen, there seems to be two constituencies still up for grabs. And it's not to your point, which is turnout um, and 
uh, invigorating the base, which I 100% agree with, they're going to be huge. Latino and African American, the turnout will have a huge impact on this race. But of the folks that are still on the fence, I don't know how you possibly still could be at this point one way or the other, but nonetheless, white college educated male um, and also some of the female electorate, um, which are going in larger numbers for Hillary uh, than before. Well, last night, he did everything in his power, seemingly, between interrupting her at every turn, uh, what he had to say about uh, the beauty contestant, um, what he said about the Rosie O'Donnell stuff. Or, I can go on and on here. Um, he didn't do himself any favors, but I think that comment that he went on this morning, on morning TV on a Fox channel, for crying out loud, and insulted her once again, and that she got huge in the rest, that's going to have legs beyond just today. Here's what's going to happen, Richard. For the folks, and I don't mean to offend any of his supporters, but for the folks that are already with Trump, rawr, go, Donald, you tell him, you tell that Lester no PC, Hall. Yep. Right, no PC, we're taking our country back. For the rest of us, for him to, I'm not even going to say insinuate, for him to basically tell a woman, I mean, it's, it's outrageous. You, you, you wait too much. Who are you? Last time I checked, Mr. Trump, you're no beauty queen. A woman and a Latina woman at the at the same time. Right. So there, it, it's I mean, kind of two big groups as well. Miss Housekeeping, calling her Miss Housekeeping, allegedly Miss Housekeeping. Now, we also have, Dom, a, a name you know well, Rudy Giuliani, who... Time to retire. Uh, I tell you, I, whatever you think of Rudy, and I think his performance, forget about what you thought of him on September 10th in 2001. What he did for this city, I still maintain whatever he's done in his post electoral campaign uh, career notwithstanding, he really was America's mayor, and I think he did. No one can take that away. But particularly in this election season, he can't fight the urge to inject himself in front of every camera, every microphone that he can. The stuff that he said, he called Clinton, what was it, stupid today or ignorant. He then also said that Trump should be able to pre-approve going forward the other moderators for all following debates, and maybe Trump shouldn't even show up for two of the, the two remaining debates. Do you think, first of all, that Trump could never um, uh, fight the urge to be in front of a camera with 80 to 100 million Americans? He'll be there for the rest of the debates here. Or do you think there's a chance he says he felt embarrassed by last night, which he hates, and he's not going to show up for the second or maybe the third one. If he doesn't show up for the future debates, game over. He loses. So he has to show up, Richard. Whether uh, you know in the in the primary, he he towards the end, once he was the clear front runner, he said, "I'm not doing this anymore." One could make a case that you understood because it was a clown show and all these ridiculous questions where he was the number one target. But Mr. Trump. You want to be president of the United States. It's time, you know, you talk all this nonsense. Man yep. up, Mr. Trump. He you loses, know, he loses <laughs> more than this race if he doesn't show up for one of the debates. He right, loses he his everything. entire persona yes. and he loses his business okay, image too. Correct. He you're, becomes you're the, the biggest quitter in American you're politics. Accurate. You're there last night. I'll do this both ways. I first start with you on the Clinton front. First of all, I know they did a victory lap last night. I get it overconfidence um, will rub a lot of people wrong uh, in the American public. People were more upset with him than falling in love with her last night. What counsel would you give if they're going to do something different for the second and third debates? What does she have to guard against and what should she do that she didn't do last night in debate number two? I would, I would advise her to dive into a little more policy on some issues, pick out a handful of issues. Even at the risk of being wonky? Yeah, even at the risk of being wonky because at this point now, the, the, I think the, the ground has been sowed so she can establish herself as the one president on stage, more so than she did this time. And I would also limit the topics that she snipes back to, at him at. At some point, she's, I, I would pivot her to try to play a little bit above what he's doing and show that she's more qualified. And she, he, she's already shown, and he's already shown, that he's not. I thought there was two areas where she struggled to find an answer for last night. When Trump pressed on the law and order, even after he went to stop and frisk, which I was a little surprised about, but still, he went there. She didn't seem to have an answer, I thought. And guys, we've talked about this before. She could have pointed to a, a person you've been interviewed, you guys interviewed, which was a guy who stopped literally 25 times, who was a student, just because he was in the wrong neighborhood. She could have put a human face on that. She chose not to. She struggled with that. And also, his constant refrain, you've had 30 years. What do you have to show for your basically career in public service? 
and she kept saying about how much of a clown he was. She never really answered, why you? I think those are both fair points, and she needs to come up with answers for that. I also think she needs to reach out to the disaffected voters who they see their job prospects whittling, they see the tenor of the country changing, the people who are afraid, and there is a lot of fear in the country right now. She hasn't really reached out to those voters either, and I think she needs to extend an olive TPP branch. TPP, too, on the trade issue. Um, they moved off of that one, but you could see, I, I think yeah. she was struggling she's a little bit to explain She's got some weaknesses, but, she does. you know, fortunately she's running against the right guy. She's running against Mr. Well, weakness. speaking of that guy, Dom, the good news is it can't get much worse for him, okay? But what does he need to do other than prepare the next time around? Should he go full <clears throat> ugly here and bringing up uh, the infidelities and all the rest? Or should he try and be presidential and try and have, uh, you know... Trump 2.0 and make himself look like somebody that you could trust in the Oval Office. He tried the presidential route. Did he really and, though? And I, for the first 30 minutes last night, but he ended up becoming a spoiled brat, a spoiled rich brat uh, that couldn't handle the criticism. So the only ace that he has left, his, his base is going to be with him and turn out. He's got to go to the scandals. He, he has no other choice because his clock was cleaned last night. And if, if he continues along that road, it, he just looked like he looked like amateur hour See, up against somebody I, I that was think, it, that was that was that had more mental ability than he did. I think she said sorry, but I still think there's meat on the bone if he wants to go after the emails. He didn't ever he maybe fine. You, you can say agree, uh, agree. Lester Holt didn't bring it up. But it's on him to bring up Benghazi. He never brought it up last night. He had opportunities on foreign policy. He could have brought up, he didn't go there. I don't know. I think he's got to be careful. She'll be ready with an answer if she goes after mm -hmm. if he goes after Hillary because of Jennifer Flowers or Monica Lewinsky and the rest here. He's in a glass house, and also maybe, she'll be there with her kid. You know? know, maybe he should study a little bit. Actually, prepare. I think, I think that, that's that might, not that that might help. Given. That might well, help. Well, you would have thought he would have done it the first time. Mm -hmm. To be fair, finally, a meme came up last night, Andrew. Um, that Trump won. Explain this one. All right, well, look, some people got the joke because this was an ironic tweet. Others didn't. It was a hashtag called Trump won that prompted Clinton supporter Russell Drew to tweet, makes sense that a party of folks who don't believe in science believe in unscientific online polls. Went on to say mental morphine for defeat. Liberal comic and radio host John Fugelsang chimed in with, what the media doesn't get is that Donald Trump is the closest many Americans will ever get to to voting for Boss <laughs> Hogg. That's a Dukes of Hazard reference if you don't know. Comedian Frank Conniff, TV's Frank from Mystery Science Theater 3000, writing, Trump won is the Trump University <laughs> diploma of hashtags. Todd in the shadows, I love Twitter names, got creative, turning Trump won into Trump won't release his tax return. See what he did there? And finally is Trump himself, who tweeted this morning, the number one trend on Twitter right now is Trump won. Thank you. Trump says he has the best words. Irony is apparently not one of them. Uh, well, this again here, um, I think the hors d'oeuvre. I think we're going to get two more. Real quickly, guys, do you think ratings for debate number two or three will top the numbers we saw last night? They did go against Monday Night Football, but do you think we got a chance here to see 90, 100 million people as the stakes theoretically rise? No. I think, I think maybe number. 10, 15 percent of the audience are like, enough of this. I can't wait for this election to be over. I'm not tuning in again. I'm not wasting another 90 Although minutes Although I think most people, once they tuned in, they didn't leave just because you didn't know it was going to happen. Right, but the ratings will be much higher for debate, debate number two because ah, Trump has ooh. already forecast, I'm going there. Yes. And so the American people are like, uh-oh. Okay. What are we betting on? What clear, are we betting on? Yeah, there's a bet here. I see a gentleman bet, but I know these two here, so we'll see uh, who's right and wrong here. Fascinating. All right, coming up next. We will fact check the debate. I know it's crazy, but we're actually going to get into the truths, the half-truths, and the outright lies. We're going to look at them all here and uh, break it down. He started his business with $14 million borrowed from his father, and he really believes that the more you help wealthy people, the better off we'll be, and that everything will work out from there. I don't buy that.